patiently for my Lord, he inclined and heard my cry. He brought me up out of the pit, out of the many clay. I will sing, sing a new song. I will sing. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the New Church of Boulder Valley live stream service today. It's good to be back with you. I hope that this finds you well and uh, ready to hear something from the Lord's Word, something that's inspiring from his teachings. We're going to talk today about communication and specifically about hearing and uh, listening, something that we seem to need to do a better job of in this world. So we'll start with our first song, and this song is Obey My Voice. And just a welcome to the children who are here as well. Um, the first part of our service will be for you, and then we'll have a talk for the adults as well. So let's start with Obey My Voice.
The Lord said, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them will be like a wise person who built their house upon a rock. Amen. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Oh Lord, our creator and God, thank you for this opportunity to listen to you, to hear your words spoken, that it may impact our lives and affect us for the better. Help us to be wise people, Lord, who hear your word and do it, that we might have the strength of you in our life to guide us and to connect us to each other and help us to find happiness that is eternal and lasting. Lord, help us to open our ears and hear what you teach what you teach us. Amen. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so upon the earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. O Lord, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Amen. I'd like to begin by speaking with the children. And children, today we're going to talk about a parable, which is a kind of a story. And the, the meaning of a parable is it's a story that has some message or a deeper idea to teach us about our spiritual life in this case, because the Lord is teaching it. And everything that the Lord says has that kind of value. It's a story that has a deeper meaning about how we are to live or how we're to, to become more loving, how we can love the Lord and our neighbor better. So this story is a probably a familiar one, the story of the parable of the sower. And a sower is somebody who casts seeds or plants seeds in the ground. And so let's hear the story and then we'll talk a bit about more about it. We have some examples of what the Lord's talking about here today. This is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13. Then Jesus spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Amen. It's an interesting way that the Lord ends that story. If you have ears to hear, then listen, then hear. And I think we're all probably today in that category where we have some ears, we can listen to what the Lord is saying. And he's saying there's a story. And if you've been gardening this year, have done it, planted any gardens outside at your house or anything like that, you can probably relate to what we're talking about. But the Lord says a sower went out to sow. So right here I have a bunch of seeds. You can see them. And a sower is someone who just casts seeds, spreads them like that. And so sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on all these different types of soil. Some fell on the wayside. And the wayside is kind of like a hard, packed down ground, like a path that's been walked over a lot, so it's really hard. It's almost like this rock. I tried to get some wayside, but it kept breaking up when I dug it up. But you can hear it's kind of hard. And if you planted any seeds on the wayside, the birds would just come and take them, because there's no way that it can those seeds can take root into the ground because it's too hard. So that was the first one. The Lord said, then some seed fell where there was not much depth of earth. There's a little bit of soil, so you can kind of see that. We have a little bit of dirt in here, but mostly rocks. And in this case, you can see that the, a plant could take root and grow for a little while, but it doesn't have room for its roots to go deep down and get nutrition and water from the soil. So when the sun comes up, it kills them off. It's, it's too hot and they die off. And the other seed was this one where there were thorns. Now, I, I pulled out this, this uh, thistle on Friday, and there, so it's kind of looking bad, but it really has all these prickles all over it and stickers on it. And just to make it worse, there are all these 
earwigs around it, so I left it outside in this morning. Even more earwigs, just to talk about how gross these weeds are. But um, so the seed that fell where there, where there were uh, thorns and, and where there were weeds is what choked it up. When things started to grow, the weeds just overgrew them and choked them out. Then finally, the seeds fell on good soil. You can see the soil is nice and rich and easy to work with, and the seeds could easily take root in there and grow. So the Lord tells us this story because he wants us to know that our minds are like a garden. They're like the ground where the Lord is always trying to put ideas or truths from his word or good impulses, good desires, tries to plant them in there so that they will take root and grow and so that we can change and we become someone who's loving, someone who's kind, generous, compassionate, and all that kind of stuff. But there's things that we have to work on. Now, if you did any gardening this year, you know that you can't just go outside and just throw some seeds on the ground and expect some nice vegetables to grow or nice flowers to grow. You have to prepare the soil. You might have to break it up because it's too hard, or you might have to pull out the rocks or pull out the weeds so that a soil looks more like that one in the front. And that takes work. And the same thing like our mind. We have to try to get away from this hard soil, sort of like we have our minds made up. We, we, we figure we already know everything, and there's no way for the Lord's word to penetrate because we're convinced of our own rightness. Nothing gets through. And the birds of the air, the, our own ideas just take away the Lord's ideas from us. This other soil is like we're interested in what the Lord says, like it's an interesting stuff, nice ideas, but when we start to think about what we really want, it's like, no, I don't, I'm not really that interested in what the Lord is saying, and those seedlings die off when the sun comes out. Then the weeds picture our own selfishness, our own bad behaviors that we might be involved in. Maybe we're angry, and we, maybe we're mean, and it's like being some are like being a thorn. People don't want to get near you. If they get near you, they get hurt because we're not acting kindly. And those things we need to pull out. When our soil, or when our mind is ready, the Lord's word takes root and it grows and it produces fruit. As it says, some 100 fold, some 60, some 30. All those wonderful ideas that the Lord has for us can really start to become part of our life. Now, this is true also of how we want to listen to people. We want to try to be open minded, try to be someone who can hear what people are saying and not already have our mind made up or not care about what, they, what, what they're interested in or maybe we just don't, we're just not, yeah, we just don't care about other people. So like, we'll choke that out. So I hope that story makes some sense for you and um, hope we can work on our own soil. Maybe you can go outside and do some gardening today as a way of remembering how the story is. Go look for some ground that's hard and see what that's like and some ground where there's too much rock and not enough soil maybe find some weeds and pull those out, and maybe find some places where there's nice soil and see how that's doing, okay? Thank you, children. Let's um, sing our next song that we find here. This is My Father's World is our next song.
I invite you to bow your heads for a blessing on the children. Oh Lord, please protect your children and teach them from your word the way to heaven. May the Lord give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. Amen. Well, thank you, children, for being here today. And maybe you have some lessons that we sent out prepared for you, or maybe you have something else that your parents have planned for you. But thank you, and you're welcome to stay, of course. We're going to continue to read now with some more lessons from the Word with the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10. Now it happened as they went that Jesus entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me here to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. And then from the book of James, chapter 1. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives, and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts, for it has the power to save your souls. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. And our final reading is from the Heavenly Doctrine for the New Church from the work Apocalypse Explained 249. It's explaining this short phrase, if anyone hears my voice. If anyone hears my voice signifies if one attends to the Lord's precepts. This is evident from the signification of to hear as being to attend. That is to observe with attention and to hearken or obey. For the things that enter by the hearing are not only seen by the understanding, but also, if they are in accord with our affection, are obeyed. For interior affection joins itself to things heard, but not to things seen. Therefore, there are, there are therefore two significations of hearing and hearkening in common discourse, namely, to hear anyone or listen, and to hear anyone or hearken to them. The latter means to obey, but the former means to perceive. It is said one attends to the Lord's precepts if one wishes to know truths and to study them from the word. This no one can do who is in evils of life and who has confirmed oneself in falsities of doctrine. Those who have confirmed themselves in falsities of doctrine attend to nothing in the word except what favors the principles of their falsity. Other things they either pass by as if not seen or pervert and falsify. While those who are in evils of life do not care about truths and when they hear them do not listen to them. Thus, in one way of hearing, which is seeing and perceiving truths, they receive, but not in the other way, which is hearkening or to obeying truths. Amen. We are under lessons, and blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it. Amen. still and know that I'm with you. Be still and know that I am here. Be still and know that I'm with you. Be still, be still and know. When dark
Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. I want to talk to you today about communication. It seems that as a species, we are having trouble doing that in a good or in a healthy way, if social media and the news is any indication of that. On social media, you see long threads of communication spawned by just a simple misunderstanding. Or you see people respond to things that people put out there with such mean-spiritedness. And the rules of kind communication or rules of communication are not often there asking the question before we say something or post something, is this true? Is it necessary that I post this or say this? And is it fair? The Lord asks us to be slow to pass judgment to assume the best of other people and even put a good interpretation on things that people do or say, if possible. That's what angels do and that's what the Lord asks us to try to do. As we read today in James 1, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to get angry. I love that, be quick to listen. You see though, instead people quickly talking past each other, being angry, defensive and absolute in their sureness of what they're saying or what they believe. A colleague posted this this week, um, a common saying, but with a twist here, it says, I remember when political activists would say, if you're not outraged, you're not paying attention. Today it seems everyone is outraged and no one is paying attention. There's a speaker named Julian Treasure who calls out these seven, what he calls seven deadly sins of speaking. If you're going to communicate, these are the kinds of things that make it difficult for people to listen. If you gossip, if you say things about other people, or if you're judging in what you say, or everything is negative, or you complain, or you make excuses for yourself or your behavior, or if you tell lies, or dogmatism, which is that absolutism, that being so sure of ourselves. His conclusion is when we do these things, it makes people, or it makes it difficult for people to listen to what we have to say. Well, putting that all aside for a moment, let's begin by touching on that simple, potent story of Mary and Martha. Jesus is in their house, and he's teaching them. And what would you do if that was you? The Lord's in your house, and he's teaching. Would you listen? Would you be able to be present? Or would you be checking Facebook or posting your status update or checking Instagram or cleaning the stove or wiping the counters or whatever it is? I mean, yeah, it's a challenge to sit and to listen. Even now, more days with all the information that's being rapidly fired at us, but there's so many distractions which Martha fell prey to there. And it says Martha was distracted with much serving. And she even took it to Jesus saying, don't you care that Mary has left me alone? Tell her to help me. And she created sort of this victim scenario for herself 
And no one told Martha that you had to be serving. But she's like, well, this is the thing I have to do, and, and Mary should be helping me. But Jesus says to her, Martha, you are worried and troubled over many things. One thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part that won't be taken away from her. What's that one good part? Is it sitting, sitting and listening to the Lord's word? I mean, the Lord's in her house. Sit and listen. And the other story that was shared today about the sower. The sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, seed fell on the wayside. Some fell where there was not much depth of earth. Some fell among thorns, and some fell in good soil. And it had all those different responses to it. And of course, the sower, as we said, is the Lord. And the seed is the word or the truth or answers to what matters in life. And what do we do when we encounter that, when the Lord is sowing those seeds in our life? Are we like the wayside where we're just too busy, where we've already made up our mind, or everything's packed down by overuse, we have our biases, we're hard-headed, we, and our own false principles pictured by the birds just take away the truth that's there. Or the stones where there's not much depth of earth. We're interested, the word's interesting to us, but we're not really interested in having it take root because that would require that we get rid of our own self-interest. And when the sun, com sun comes up, that self-love arises, it takes it away. Or weeds, where bad habits or evil behaviors choke out the truth. Are we doing anything to remove those from our life? And then the good ground, where actually the soil is prepared, it's ready, it's open. And that happens when we shun evils as sins against the Lord. When we actually remove those bad habits in our life with the Lord's help, the soil is ready. That's how we can be prepared for, root to take, for the truth to take root. Listen to this passage that the Lord gives. It says, But in very deed, the moment you shun evils as sins, the Lord inflows from heaven, takes away the veil, dispels the cloud, opens the spiritual mind, and so introduces you into heaven. What a beautiful thing. The moment we shun evils as sins, all these things are opened up, and the Lord introduces us into heaven. It's like once we start pulling those reeds, getting rid of the rocks, and digging up the soil, the seed can take root. So how is the Lord's word received by us? What kind of mindset or attitude do we have? Well, one key to the successful communication, of course, is listening. How, what people say, how is it received by us? How does what the Lord say, how is it received by us? What attitudes do we have? Well, let's first talk about what it means to listen. We probably all have different definitions of what it means to listen. Yet, we all probably would agree that if people don't listen to us, we feel unimportant, we feel brushed aside, we feel ignored, we feel disrespected, and so forth. And I think we often have different demands on different people that we are trying to speak to. There's a famous book on differences between men and women, and it states, and this is a generalization, which I know is dangerous to do, but it says women just want to be heard. They just want what they say to be heard and acknowledge that I understand what you're saying. But men want to fix the problem. And you can see how those two things clash because there's a different goal in mind that can cause conflict. So a different definition of what it means to listen. And as parents, listening usually means that you, the child, hear what I say, and then you immediately respond and do what I said. You obey my instructions. That same thing can happen in a relationship or marriage, for example. If we're asked, or, you know, we expect that if we said something, the person will hear it and they'll do what we said. That often is the case. Or people ask, a person may ask for advice and we give it. And if we give our advice, we expect that will be followed. But how do we feel when they just say, well, thank you, but they do something else? What we often crave, and that's what we often get from good friends, is just sympathetic ears. Someone who says, yep, I hear you. I'm sorry that you're going through that or whatever it is that you're experiencing. But the word for the new church tells us that there is a living relationship, what's called a correspondence between our ears and hearing and obedience. And the children of Israel were commanded by the Lord to wear earrings in their ears as a representation of this. They were ornaments representative of obedience. So people sh wore them to show that we're not only supposed to hear, but we're supposed to obey. And I think that's true about our expectation when the Lord speaks the truth. The expectation is that we will hear and that we will do it. Those are the two things that are expected. To hear, here's a passage from the Heavenly Doctrines that we already shared a bit of. It says, to hear 
means to attend, that is to observe with attention and to hearken or obey. For the things that enter by the hearing are not only seen by the understanding, but also if they are in accord with our affection, they are obeyed. So they're observed with attention and they are obeyed. So how good are we at that? When we hear the Lord's, Lord's word spoken, do we hear it? We hearken to it and do we obey it? When the Lord says, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it and obey it. Not just blessed are those who hear it, but blessed are those who hear and keep or obey. Or as I said, as I opened the word today, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them will be like a wise person who built their house upon the rock and can sustain the storms of life that come along. So the clear suggestion from the Lord is if you really want to be happy, listen and do. So what are some blockages that we might have to listening? Why do people sometimes have a hard time hearing what people are saying, really getting what's going on? Well, the first idea is that they are hurting, that they are suffering in some way, so they have a hard time hearing. In Exodus 6, it says, I will bring you into the land that I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I will give it to you for a possession. I am the Lord. Moses told this to the Israelites, but they would not listen to Moses because of their broken spirit and their cruel slavery. Because of their broken spirit and their cruel slavery, they could not hear this promise from the Lord. There's too much pain in their own lives, and they can't separate it out and give their attention to what's being said. Like you tell someone your own stress and your own pain, they might have their own stress and their own pain. It's too much and they can't take in any more from what you're saying. One thing you can relate to is if you've ever been really sick, it's not really a good time to hear someone else's problems or troubles. We just don't have enough strength to do that because we're so focused on our own hurts. Or if you're hungry, it's hard to really listen to somebody else when all you can think about is getting some food. So we can get fed, we can get well, and some from there try to get some help. Now, let me just be clear, we don't have to try to be therapists for people, but do recognize that everyone has their own life story, have their own hurts, they have their own pain, and that may be impacting their ability to listen and to really hear what's being said. So that's the first idea. The second idea is there's no incentive to listen. They might be out of harm's way, nothing in it for them, lack of urgency for them. The example I'll give is from Exodus chapter 8. When Pharaoh saw that there was a respite, this is during the plagues, he hardened his heart and would not listen to them, just as the Lord had said. You see that over and over in the story of the plagues with Pharaoh is that when the plague is raging, then Pharaoh is very able to listen, but as soon as it's removed, he can't hear. His heart, his heart is hardened, he won't listen. It's the same thing that you see in the book of Judges where the children of Israel, they disobey the Lord and they're attacked by an enemy and they cry out to the Lord. They're very interested in hearing what the Lord has to say at that point. The Lord sends them a judge to help them. They are free again and at peace, and they stop listening, they stop obeying, and then the whole cycle goes over again. That's the second thing. The third thing is presumption, this idea that we, we think we know what people are saying. So we kind of check out because we think we've heard it all before, or we might finish their sentences for them, or jump to conclusions about where they're going because we assume we know what they're talking about which may be connected to the fourth idea, which is suffer, we suffer from impatience, or we're anxious to get onto something else, or something we might think of as more important, like the ball game, or our favorite TV show, or our own concerns, or maybe getting to what am I gonna say next, so we leap ahead to that. The next idea is, that leads us, and that leads us to a difficult problem, of course, is, is one of self-love or pride. If, if we're so convinced that our way is the only way that will only listen if you're going to tell me what I want to know or what I already believe, what I want to hear. And that's illustrated by the parable of the sower with that wayside. We're just, we already have it figured out. So to really listen, we have to work on loving other people. We're taught that self-concern actually blocks out our concern for others and therefore our listening, our ability to care, really. Secrets of Heaven 8676 says, Pride of heart, which is self-love, drives the divine away from itself and puts heaven away from itself. For pride consists in loving self more than others, putting self before others and wishing to rule others. So it makes sense. If we're more concerned with ourself than we are with anybody else, we have a hard time hearing what they have to say because it really doesn't matter to us. So how do we listen well to other people? How do we become a good listener? 
Well, first of all, we need to practice it. Like anything else, we need to work on it. It's a, it's a skill that can be acquired by working on it. So what are the suggestions does the Lord give? The first one is to listen carefully. From Exodus 15, we read, He said, If you will listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, and give heed to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will not bring upon you any of the diseases that I brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. So listen carefully and do what is said. Why would we do that? Because we want to make sure that the message we heard is received the way it's meant to be understood. So listen for the meaning behind what someone is saying, not just the words. I think that's the problem with a lot of communication, which is written out. It's on Facebook or Instagram or something like, or all those other ways, twi twi Twitter and so forth. It's so easy to misconstrue what someone's saying or point out oh, something that was wrong because communication, the best communication is in person, face to face. The Lord says the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. So be careful of being caught up in that, oh, oh look at what it says there. Well, what's behind it? So be careful about it. The second thing is listening with compassion. Exodus 22 reads, and if your neighbor cries out to me, I will listen for I am compassionate. We listen because of compassion. Now there's often something behind what is being said by somebody. Everybody is hurting in some way. And the key is to listen with the heart and find the hurt behind the words and really hear that. If a child is acting out, if we really listen to what they have to say, we might find out that someone made fun of them at school and they're feeling sad about that. Or you get an angry response to a question you ask, and you might find out if you really listen that that person you're talking to, their parent was recently diagnosed with cancer and they are feeling a lot of stress. Here's something I found that says that the number one cause of affairs in America, the number one cause of adultery in that marriages break up is somebody found a sympathetic ear. Most affairs do not start with sexual attraction. Most affairs start because somebody found a sympathetic ear at work that they didn't find at home. And they found somebody who would look them in the eye and listen and say, you matter, I'll tune in, while the person at home was tuning out. It's been said that a man is already half in love with a woman who will listen to him. Now, to be clear, it's not to say that that's okay. It's to point out, if we can listen better, it will help us in our relationships with our spouse or the people who are close to us. And there is such a power in just listening from compassion. We don't need to fix it, we just need to hear Ask the Lord if you're ha having trouble listening to somebody or connecting with them. Ask the Lord to share his love for that person with you while you're listening. And you'll find that you will be filled and feel very differently than you did before. To have the Lord's idea, the, the way the Lord sees them is the way you see them. And the third thing is to listen attentively. Put away the distractions. Just look and listen. Be in the moment if you can't be in the moment, ask, can I talk to you later? I'm just distracted. I, I'm not able to really listen. Think about that story of Mary and Martha. Martha was just distracted by so much serving, and Mary was able to sit and listen. And the Lord says, that's what you need to do. Just sit and listen. Turn off the computer. Put away the phone. Make the time to listen. Maybe you have to schedule it. Sometimes couples have to schedule dates so they can go out and actually talk to each other because there's too much going on at home. This author, Kate Murphy, wrote this book on listening, and she said this, well, I thought it was a very potent phrase. It says, you don't have to act like you're listening or paying attention if you really are. <laughs> like, if you're really paying attention, you don't have to act that way. You don't have to be, pretend, because you really are just doing it because you care. The next thing is listen with your eyes. Approximately 80% of all conversation is nonverbal. Look at people's gestures, their facial expressions. What do they look like? What's their body doing? And email and written communication is the last best way to communicate sensitive inf information or sensitive things because we're missing out on 80% of the possible ways that we can know more about what this person is saying. So find time to get together with the person. I would ask you to do something to demonstrate this. If I ask you to take your hand and give a thumbs up like this and place your thumb on your nose. Okay? Now how many of you right now are touching your cheek with your thumb. Like well, I said, touch your nose. But did you listen, watch what I was doing or did you listen to words I said? 
Because what we see is often more strong than the words that were spoken. In Mark chapter 10, it says, Jesus looked at him, talking about the rich young ruler. He looked at him and he loved him. If you love people, you'll look at them. It says, you have my undivided attention. You're valued. You are significant. You're worth listening to, and I'm going to prove it to you by looking you in the eye. Parents, when was the last time we got down on our knees and listened, looked at our child right eye to eye and listened to what they had to say while they're talking to us? It's easy to be very busy cooking or cleaning or organizing or working on our phone or, or email, checking texts and that kind of thing. Let's put it down the distraction. Try to listen that way, eyeball to eyeball. You can ask yourself or just say to yourself, stop, look, and listen. Stop, like crossing the railroad tracks. Stop, look, and listen. Because it says that that person matters. And just listen. We don't have to try to fix it or give advice. Just say, thank you for telling me that or thank you for sharing that with me. The saying goes, we're given two ears and one mouth so that we will listen twice as much as we speak. So listening is a skill, something we need to practice. Like Martha, it's very easy to be distracted by many things. And I think we're in a time in our history where it's very vital to find a way to really listen and hear what people are saying. With all the racial issues that are going on in our world, we need to listen. We need to really listen, not be reactive, not be fragile, be defensive or presumptive, but just to lean in and really listen to what's being said. What is behind this? What is going on? What's true here? Same thing with politics. We're so divided. But be patient and listen and really want to understand the other person, where they're coming from. Can we enter conversations hoping to have our own mind change rather than trying to convince someone else to change their own mind? Hoping that we can learn, hoping we can grow, hoping we can understand. My brother is a marriage and family therapist, and he says this, and I believe it's true, that everyone's behavior, and I will, be had, I will add to that, everyone's beliefs, everyone's behavior and beliefs makes sense, meaning they're doing it, they're believing it because there's some reason for that. It's underlying it. Can we find out what's going on? So lean in and listen. What's their story? Lean into the discomfort because it's uncomfortable when people say things you don't like or you don't agree with. Brene Brown says, on top of knowing that you are loved and worthy of love and belonging, I don't know if there's a greater gift that we can give our kids than the ability to lean into difficult conversation and be vulnerable. Because it does take vulnerability to really listen with an open heart, with compassion and interest. But if we can do that, we'll find more meaning, we'll find more connection, we'll find more common ground. We might even find unity, even when we don't agree with what people are saying. We'll find unity because we we'll realize that person is human, and so am I. You don't have to agree, but understanding goes a very long way towards healing the divide. Amen. We bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Lord, help us to open our ears, open our hearts, open our hands, and welcome the conversations that we need to have. Welcome learning and understanding where other people are coming from. Help us to listen, to hear, and when it comes to you and your word, Lord, help us to hear and obey. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to learn from your word. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. I will sing our last song today, which is called Here I Am, Lord.
Thank you so much for being here today in worship. I wish you a blessed week and that you stay well. And if you want to join us for our Zoom gathering, the information, you can, you can email me that, uh, email me and ask for that link if you don't have it. It's david at ncbvnewchurchbowlrally.org. Thank you. God bless you and stay well. <laughs>